Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Before we begin, I just want to say a couple of things. First and foremost, I want to wish each and every one of you, my viewers, a happy 2025. I hope that everything you wish for is coming to reality sooner or later, but sooner rather than later. I hope you are all healthy and continue to be in good health. And last but not least, I hope you are all surrounded and continue to be surrounded by your loved ones. So happy 2025. Um, second thing that I want to say on the docket is uh, my web camera broke over the holidays. So my wonderful mugshot over here in the corner is going to be missing until I save up for a new one. Uh, the purpose of today's video is going to be another attempt at setting up free IPA on Fedora server. And the reason why I'm going to do that for a third time is because I've had a couple of emails from concerned users saying that they were for whatever reason unable to follow the, uh, the previous guide. They just get stuck on the internal DNS uh, portion of it and the DNS forwarder. So what I would like to do is I am going to start from the absolute zero, from deploying the Fedora server to giving you a full walkthrough until you have a fully and functional free IPH server. So please, before we continue, click on that like button, subscribe, uh, ring that bell, and uh, for all intents and purposes to help me grow my channel, please make sure that you um, whitelist ads so that whenever they play, I can get some commission for it. Now then, let's begin. We are currently in the installation window for Fedora server. I've already selected English Canada and let's go ahead and click on continue. Now on to the options. Inst uh, installation destination, we're going to leave the um, that little um, automatic selection. I've already had a installation done on this disk, so I'm just reclaiming all the space. But for you, all you have to do uh, in this window is just click on done. Now, we're going to go on to network and host name. So uh, as you guys can see, there's a little window on the bottom. Go ahead and input a host name, free IPA. Make sure, uh, because you will need this for the future, make sure that you give it a host name in all lowercase and then click on apply. After that, click on done. Third and foremost, software selection. Just there's nothing really um, overly complicated. You can leave it as the basic package uh, because we are all going to uh, take care of everything throughout uh, sorry from inside the command line interface so we don't really need anything special however make sure that you enable the root account and create an account that's going to have administrative privileges so let's go ahead and enable the root account make sure that you put in a strong password but do not allow root ssh login click on save or sorry done and in this scenario, we're going to put a, a user account that's going to have administrative flavor. So password one to three exclamation. All right, click on done, and we are ready to begin installation. I'm going to pause the recording, and you should see the next window right about now. And just like that, you should already have Fedora booted up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and log in with our user that we created during the installation process. Password. Now, in my case, or in your general case, uh, speaking, what you would like to do is, well, if you're using a virtual machine, obviously, uh, you'd like to install um, the open VM tools. If you haven't done that, it would be a great idea to do so. Um, another thing, if you have any potential impending updates, you would want to do that as well. Now, um, there's going to be some quiet spots from, um, 
for, from the video because I, I would ideally not want to pause this just so that you guys can follow along and see what's going on. Okay, and so after you have compl completed your uh, updates and performed your basic installation, let's go ahead and install the free IPA server and all of the additional software. So what you would want to do is you type in DNF space install space free IPA dash asterisk, and that's going to install everything that's Whoops, well, I gotta learn how to spell first. And that is going to install everything related to the free IPA server. When with that, we will be right back. After all the files have been downloaded and installed, before we continue, there's two things that you need to do. Number one, uh, go into whatever router or gateway you are using. And ideally, you would want to add the free IPA server that you are going to be using as an entry in your static leases. And you want to add it as a future DNS server onto your local network, but do not add it as a DNS server just yet. For, now, for step one, you want to add it as a static lease so that when you type in so that when you type in um, ping free IPA, it will respond both with username, with uh, domain name and IP. The second thing that you want to do is go to nano etc hosts. And at the end of the file, you want to add the local IP of the server, whoops, 192. Hold on just a sec. Come on. 192.168.1.100 tab the fully qualified domain name. So in this case, free IPA dot hog data services. And then another tab. And then you just want to add the host name. So free IPA. If your host file looks like this, just on the free IPA server. That means you are good to go. And now we can proceed with the IPA server install. To start the installation process, go ahead and type in IPA dash server dash install. Now, first prompt is going to tell us, do we want to configure the integrated DNA? Yes, we do. What is the host name? This should automatically detect from the um, the host file that we just edited. So if you press on uh, enter, or sorry, just before you press enter, make sure that it is detected and inputted as an FQDN. Because if you look at the prompt over here, it says using the form hostname.domain name as an example, master.example.com. So make sure that the host name is being detected in its FQDN form. If it is perfect, go ahead and press enter. Now, uh, da -da 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 -da. the next prompt, the next prompt is going to ask you to confirm the domain name. If this server host name was properly detected, the second step should be self-explanatory and it should be good to go. Uh, realm name is same thing. It's essentially the domain name. Go ahead and enter an administ or, or sorry. Da -da 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 -da. Um, so this directory manager password is the equivalent of the DRSM password for those of you who are more familiar with, <clears throat> with, uh, active directory and are just doing, um, free IP now. So let's go ahead and enter a secure password. Now it's going to ask us to put in a password for the domain administrator. Let's go ahead and do password one, one, 
password one one. Oh, whoops, I need to learn to spell password one one. Password one one. Again, okay. Password one one. Password one one. Okay, there we go. Now, the next step is that it wants for us to configure DNS forwarder. What does that mean? Um, by definition, DNS forwarding and DNS resolution cannot exist on the same server. So, first off, we're going to select um, yes on this. And it's going to detect uh, DNS servers which are configured into your uh, result configuration file. Ideally speaking, ideally speaking, this should be the address of your gateway. And the reason why I'm saying this is because your router or whatever is acting as your gateway, whether it's DDWRT, OpenWRT, PFSense, OpenSense, um, uh, whatever you have as a, a router that's taking you to the internet also has the static lease for your free IPA. And that's what's going to be pointing to your um, free IPA server. So do we want to configure this as a DNS forwarder? And the answer is yes. So make sure that you over here are putting only the IP of your gateway. Now, a lot of people here are going to put 8888 or 8844 or 1001 or 1111. That is incorrect. The reason why this is incorrect is because those DNS servers handle outside internet traffic. The server over here or the, the, the um, appliance over here that you need to take care of is going to only be handling internal traffic. If you don't know what the difference is, think about it this way. If you didn't have internet, there's no way for you to reach 8888 or 8844 or 1001 or 1111. However, you can still reach whatever router you are directly connected to. And that is the difference why you should only put here in this spot an address that can resolve your domain internally. So go ahead and just because the um, default response is yes, go ahead and click on enter. Uh, all detected DNS servers were added. Do enter an IP address for DNS forwarder or press enter to skip. So we're going to press enter because we are going to skip. Uh, do I want to search for missing reverse zones? Yes, I do. NetBIOS is hawk data. Yes, that is correct. Do I want to configure crony with NTP server or pool address? I am going to skip that right now. No, I do not. Uh, do I want to configure the system with following values? So before you press or uh, type in yes and press enter, of course, just go over through uh, your settings over here. Um, ideally, it should look something like this with your value. Okay, so if everything is good, go ahead and press enter. So this is going to take its time. Uh, last time I did it, it took about a solid five minutes. So it should take about five minutes. I'm just going to speed up this section and I'll see you guys at the end. And finally, once you see setup complete, giving you the next steps, make sure that you enable all of these ports through your firewall, otherwise it will not work. However, what I'm going to do, uh, this is just for um, demonstrative purposes. I am just going to stop the firewall so that we can access it. And what we're going to do is we're going to access it by domain name. So free IPA, hawk data services, IPA, or sorry, forward slash IPA, forward slash UI. 
and it should meet you with a potential security ahead. Now, the only reason why it's going to meet you with a potential security ahead is because this server now have a cell signed certificate. certificate. If you click on advanced and accept risk and continue, you will be greeted with the free IPA uh, login page. Now you can type in admin and then the password that we sent during setup is going to authenticate you. And in your uh, browser, you should have the free IPA web GUI at your fingertips. I hope that this is going to clarify a lot of questions about user from users that have had a continuous amount of issues but as you guys can see the setup is fairly straightforward and you just need to understand what is being asked in the prompts again if you are putting an external dns ip during setup of course it's not going to work because those servers do not have access inside your network that being said Please, if you have any issues or any concerns, or I don't know, maybe even an insult, send me an email. Uh, it is posted onto my profile page on um, the YouTube channel um, homepage. So you can reach out to me at any point in time. I can even mail you back and it'll be my pleasure to converse with you for any issues that you may have. Thank you so very much for watching. Again, please like, subscribe. It helps me grow. Please consider whitelisting the channel for ads so that I may eventually get a revenue from this as well. Your support and patronage means the world to me. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.